Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our today's webinar, New and Hidden Functions in Smart Annotate. Hello, everybody, from my side. Well, I'm talking to you today from the BMW offices in Erlangen in Germany. Here's the agenda. I will fill, I think, about the next 40 to 45 minutes with. Well, after a short motivation, I will give you a brief overview of the Smart Annotate software itself. And uh, I like to do this uh, in a live demo. So this is no recording also. It's just live in the system. And after this, uh, I want to come to uh, recent developments in the software. And possibly there are a lot of smaller functions that you may not know about. And I also want to show those in, in a in a live demo. And finally, I'll give you an outlook what's being next in the development of Smart Annotate software. Okay, so let's talk about the motivation itself. Well, Smart Annotate <clears throat> is a software that's around for three or five, four years right now, and it's designed to support the users and as well the administrators uh, while placing, harmonizing, and managing standard annotations. And this is in a 2D drawing and also in a 3D model. There's two driving principles behind the software. This, the first is automatic placement as far as possible. And the second is using multiple languages in, in the software. And the <clears throat> second motivation for especially uh, this webinar is that Smart Annotate is more or less completely driven by customers and users. And so a lot of requirements that we have realized in the in the latest custom projects uh, came into the software itself. And I just want to show those later on <clears throat> to make them more public. Yeah, let's start with a little overview of the Smart Annotate software. It's more, about, <clears throat> more or less more mostly about users selecting annotations from a from a dialogue adjusting values and content, and finally placing annotations that can be either automatic and on the other hand, manual placement. We are supporting uh, an, a multi-language support approach in this case. And with this requirement, there came the request for format and metadata management with it. And so there is a, a little metadata management and format management section in this. And for doing this in a good manner, we added a, a pretty sophisticated administration dialog to it. So administrators can easily set this software up. And yeah, so these are the four, five points in, in here. And Next thing is just let me show the software, uh, how it works in general. So let's go to my Creo parametric <clears throat> session. And well, I just want to show this while creating a new drawing. So let's go for file new. Drawing in here and well, webinar. Indeed. So this is the file name. I don't use the default template right now. And so I'm pretty empty here. Selecting uh, the default uh, a model for my drawing. I keep it empty right now. I'm using uh, a European standard size for this. Well, and I still leave this complete blank drawing. So for illustration purpose, I'm adding a view in here, just uh, placing it somewhere here. Just leaving it like this. So don't need to be more exact right now. And from here, I'm while well, entering the Smart Annotate software, and it brings with it a ribbon uh, UI that contains administration dialogues, uh, 
<clears throat> icons about creation and ones about modification. So the administration area in here, uh, this can be blanked for the uh, real use because users don't need to access those functions. The other, uh, <clears throat> the creation and modification icons are visible to all users. And I start with uh, the big annotation icon. A dialog opens up. Well, it's pretty big right now, so I, yeah. The dialog itself is um, divided in multiple areas. Well, on the left-hand side, you see uh, what it's called global filter. This is a content structure that, that you can set up yourself. And the software can mm, can look into the, the parts that we are using in here and decides upon a parameter uh, that this is a plastic part. So a, a parameter in this part that I'm using in the drawing says, well, it's a plastic part. And so this, the software brings you into the branch of plastic parts here. Well, this will be um, interesting later as well. In my setup, I want to have my my drawing issued with English as the main language. And I did choose a secondary language, that's in my case German, but I also have different options here. So I have French and Chinese um, configured for my purpose, but uh, you can configure any language that you may want to have in here. And from here, you see the, the format management section. In my case, I already have a one sheet with a A3 size, but my frame is still empty. And I have to choose one of the uh, types of frame types that I want to use. In my case, uh, the R&D default template, and it brings up a few additional user selections. So I could choose a different logo here, blue or red logo. I could uh, choose a different projection method between first angle or third angle. And I could choose a, a copyright in here. So this is all customizable and this is what it works for me. And there's a little icon in here that tells me that the software will try to place two annotation, standard annotation sets initially. So this is what we can see in a minute, in a second. Because if I hit apply, the software will place uh, the frame and my first standard annotations on a drawing for me. So if you look a little bit more deeply in here, some of the parameters already have been filled in the in the uh, drawing table, but some others are not filled so far. And this we can work on with the second tab with the metadata management in here. And you see very <clears throat> quickly that the parameters that came in from the part have been filled automatically into the drawing table because they are existing and filled pre-filled with material or article number information. But those parameters that will remain in a drawing are not created already because I just started with an empty drawing. So I can work on this very easily. I can create all the missing parameters automatically in the background. And I also can set the designation for windchill in here. And if I do so, it's filling out my um, my parameters automatically. Oh, I created this drawing here. My name is, well, I even can use those for just adding the functions quickly and easily. I can hit apply and it will <clears throat> call out the parameter values in the drawing table. Next, we, we have a quick look at 
the standard annotations tab, that's the annotations to the right over here. And they have been placed automatically when I started the drawing because they are configured like this. I have a, a set of annotations in my main dialog here. And if I switch any values, for example, from minimum dimension to maximum dimension, hit apply, it will switch the display in, the, in my stack here. I easily can add or remove uh, items from the list. So let's uh, have a look like here. If I select from my pool in the in the bottom area, it will move to the upper list. That's the preview for the ones called out in the drawing. And I'm using two, two additional ones uh, in my stack now. If I apply the selection to my drawing, you will see there is another note here for the ejected pin marks and unspecified geometry will be put in here. So this is very, very simple to select for the user and you can put in values as he likes or select values from a drop down menu. If I go to the next tab, we have a different type of notes. We call it notes. It's a manual selection. Again, very simple from the bottom. I just select one. I may adjust my values here, for example, like this. The difference is that I <clears throat> have to select the plus icon to manually place my information somewhere. So let's just place this here. I can use uh, with leader or offset placement as well. In this case, I just use the free, free placement for this information. If I hit OK, I'm coming back to the uh, Smart Annotate dialog and I could uh, repeat this action as long as I want to. So very quick, very straightforward. Uh, the next tab will be the stack notes. Um, it's again, very similar. In, the, in my case, I'm selecting all the notes from the pool in this case, and I'm having the complete list of my pre <clears throat> prepared and predefined uh, stack notes. I again can choose any other number here and can or need to use the plus I can to invoke the placement and I'm just placing this like this in here. So very quick, very easy for the the stack notes. So the difference between the the stack notes and the standard annotations is well the Standard annotations are being placed automatically to a predefined position. Uh, the stack notes are placed manually by the user. And in the background, we have symbols, Creo symbols for the <clears throat> standard annotations. And we have notes uh, in the background for the stack notes. Yeah, the flags <clears throat> tab is the one where we can use the, the flags for either uh, stack notes or standard annotations. Right now I have a few missing flags for me and I will just quickly place those. For the uh, material marking, I can use the placement. Well, this is the sign here and I just use with leader, select the surface and put it somewhere. Hit OK. I'm good with the first one. And I'm using cavity number. Uh, again, I use this with the leader to some of the surfaces. Well, it's not, not the best selection, but anyway, uh, it's being placed here. And finally, I go for 
my part index and I'm again choosing with leader. So not a very good selection, but anyway. So finally I have um, placed this. Quickly close the dialog for a second just to show that there is still associativity <clears throat> between uh, the flags and the legend node. So if I select the symbol, the re <clears throat> respective uh, node or annotation gets highlighted as well, and you can easily find out what's being connected. And this is the other way around as well. So if I select on here, I will see the uh, connected symbols over here highlighted. So I easily can keep track of those information. So let's open uh, the dialog again, just for completion very quickly. Uh, there is a symbol <clears throat> section in here. You can have uh, uh, symbols. You can, if you like, choose from a drop down list to fill in values. You can have this multiple language driven and you can select this somewhere you like. And very similar to the 2D tables, select from a, from a list. In my case, I'm, I prepared a, a, a table that's containing all the body names that I'm using in my, my drawing. Well, obviously I only have uh, a single body in here in my part. Yeah, this is um, the very first thing you can do with uh, Smart Annotate. So this is about the creation and placing information. So next thing uh, I wanna just quickly show is the modification thing, because uh, in a default, uh, this, uh, the software protects all the information against selection. So I can't do anything with it, but I can use the edit button and go through this dialog for just modifying this or for moving to another spot or even deletion. And finally, the last thing I wanna show here in the brief overview is if I wanna change the language, well, I get rid of the German and add the Chinese in here. And if I hit apply, everything that's coming through Smart Annotate will be translated uh, for you. Well, I'm not uh, very professional in, in Chinese, but I hope I did a good job for these uh, characters. A quick uh, information for this, if you wanna display uh, Chinese characters, you need to have the Arial Unicode font uh, in the background for that. So let's go exit out here and go back to my presentation. And let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the little known functions in, in the software. Well, there's first uh, user profiles and favorites that I wanna show you. And there is uh, the notification center that's working in the background for you. I wanna mm, have a look at uh, using grouped symbols for standard annotations. And finally, I have a few slides on the batch process for multi-language document creation. So let's start uh, with the user profiles, so they're not activated by default. So you have to go to, through a config setting and enable the user profile <clears throat> functionality. What does it do? Uh, a user can save his own favorite XML files and while saving those, his selection and his values that he's having right now will be saved to this favorite file. 
that's currently available for standard annotations and stack notes. Coming with this is a function that's called recently used. So when the user leaves the user dialog with OK, then the latest used settings <clears throat> are saved to his local machine automatically and a structure of XML files is created in the background. This applies to the used languages, the standard annotation selections and the stack note selections. And well, yes, you can retrieve those uh, <clears throat> standard annotation and stack notes with the recently used uh, icon from the uh, tabs. The notification center, this pops up in the case of anything's going wrong. So the software detects anything like missing parameters or missing flags, or if parameter values are not correct, set, or even more important, if definitions are outdated. So for example, an administrator uh, changes uh, the content of a note like a new um, edition of a standard, then the user will be prompted to there's anything outdated in here and he can take the respective action. And <clears throat> it's not just the listing of uh, errors, it's also a help for correction. You can hit the auto correction button. Most uh, warnings or errors can be resolved, but you also can resolve things manually and you will prompt it to the correct um, area where you can solve these errors. About uh, a group choice that's used by administrators in the first place by making it easier for the users. When a user select a group, then he, he can the he can select the instance of the group and this instance is usually dependent uh, from the group. So in my example over here, if the user selects three, <clears throat> three datums, he will be prompted for three datum input fields. And if he selects two datums, he will be prompted for two datum input fields only. And the result will be uh, a different symbol group. So the batch processing, <clears throat> well, is uh, organized in, with a application programming interface with an API in the background. And this API enables um, you to per perform predefined tasks for the selected CREA objects. And this is automated and completely user independent. For instance, uh, with the windshield worker, you can call the API uh, of Smart Annotate uh, in order to translate a model into a different set of languages, export it, and afterwards you get the format like a PDF file out of it. You can perform the following tasks with the batch processing. Uh, you can, as I said, translate all textual objects like symbols, notes, tables that were created with Smart Annotate into dedicated languages. <clears throat> if you have done this, you can create a PDF file of the job model. You can export a CREA view file uh, that's valid for solid models and drawings, and you even can export a TIFF raster file as well. The general sequence of a, a batch run will be like this. You create a, a drawing using Smart Annotate annotations. You check <clears throat> it into Windchill. You run the Windchill worker, and the worker, yeah, well, starts Smart Annotate uh, API, and the Smart Annotate software creates the requested files. And finally, the Windchill worker may apply the 
creative files to the objects back again as for example a secondary content or so. Well, the recent new developments uh, that I want to talk about next is a uh, integration of the flag functionality for stack notes. I will show this in a, in a minute. And well, we have integrated the support for multi-language paramedia value lists. So that's quite sophisticated how this works. And uh, well, we were asked to support uh, or better support colorblind persons. And this is what we put into the software as well. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the, the flag functionality. Previously, you had to switch between the different tabs to do this task. And uh, so we were asked to kind of uh, integrate uh, this task so you have a better overview. And we started with the stack notes in here. And you can, you can now start flag placement directly from the stack notes tab and don't have to move to or switch to the flags tab anymore. The multi-language parameter value lists. <clears throat> so that for, from the user point of view, he selects a value from a drop-down list, like in this picture here. And he will see all the the um, descriptions or namings also in in the language he is using Creo in. So that's the dependency here. In the background, the software adds parameters for all installed languages. In my case, there are four: Chinese, German, English, and French and puts the correct value into it. And finally, uh, when this parameter is called out, you can use all uh, the, the four uh, parameters or parameter names to call out the respective value in here. From administrator point of view, um, you have to prepare this a text file. So this text file may come from uh, SAP or Agile or wherever, Excel. Uh, <clears throat> finally, you, you need to have um, a file, a tabular separated text file that starts with a unique ID for every node entry. Second, you can import this text file into Smart Annotate and if you're doing this again, again, and again, the modifications will create new revisions in Smart Annotate for every entry. Next, as an administrator, if this is a, a long list, you're creating kind of a list file, a list text file manually and just putting in all the IDs to this. No translations used here. And finally, you're you're using this list point, point text file in your parameter definition in Smart Annotate and call out the parameter in a format symbol or other definitions on the, on a drawing, in a model, wherever. Supporting color blindness was uh, uh, an easy task to do. It was just about uh, removing uh, the, sh the sa same shape of our color-coded symbols. So we just changed the symbols and we aligned them with the icons that we are having in the notification center. So it's all easier to, to use now. And this brings me back to the Creo parametric. And yeah, for, for this purpose, I will open a, a very similar drawing that's being created up front. Very, very close, very, uh, very similar. A few more uh, views in here. 
And what I want to do directly is open the Smart Annotate dialog here and prompt you to the notification center at the back. So a little pop-up um, area came up because software has detected a few errors and warnings. And I can hit this button to open the notification center itself. In my case, I have um, three errors warnings with it and I'm just one by one going to resolve them. So in the first warning is, my node division definition visible surfaces is outdated. So I can uh, just resolve them. So this can mean another value can be in there or a different textual uh, piece that you, you have used or whatever. Anything that uh, is uh, modifying the node definition. So I resolve this and now the software updates this to the latest revision. Next one is uh, I'm having a value of a parameter that's not matching my uh, my format. If I want to go for resolve this, I see, well, my SIP number is possibly wrong. And if I read my description, uh, oh, it has to, to be six digits only. I have to re remove uh, uh, one of the digits. Well, hopefully being the com correct one now. Uh, and it's uh, the correct format here. If I apply this to my drawing in, in the box here, you see my document numbers now correctly called out from the list. And there's still one arrow and it's <clears throat> not finding uh, a flag symbol added for the parts index. So just go here, resolve this. It brings me in the placement of the parts index like here. And as I showed before, I'm using uh, a leader for this somewhere placing it here. And now I'm all good with anything. Well, notification send us grayed out. So nothing anymore that's uh, a problem here. So closing the dialogue for, for this case. And so the next thing I just want to show is the, uh, the, the user profiles that I'm having. Um, for example, in the stack notes area. On oh, stack notes, I have the favorites, the save and the open button. So let's just, for example, uh, modify this by, for example, like this, and save this favorite here. And three. And for for my stack notes, in this case, I switch to uh, page two or sheet two, and you see my current um, stack notes placement. So I'm now going to remove everything. And the software, as it still keeps track of the, the flags, it's asking me for every flagged note if I want to delete the references. So I, I just have deleted all the flags here. And if I use apply, the complete node will disappear. So no stack nodes anymore in here. And if I now open my favorite and what I just saved, it brings back the list of my stack nodes, including the values I put in, but it cannot automatically bring back the stacks, the, the, the flags. So I just once want to apply this, go in here, place this once again. And from here, I can uh, very easily show uh, if I hit on the, the flag symbol, a plus sign will appear for the placement and 
Well, a warning, it's just that this flag has not been placed right now. So this is what I want to do. Cavity number somewhere again with leaders, somewhere here. We are here, this is number two. <clears throat> and when I have placed it, well, number two will be boxed here. So you can use any other, other text indicator, but boxing, this is a nice indication of having this connected. Again, if I select this uh, text in here, it'll it'll highlight my flag as well. So I can keep track where all the flags are. So just go back to the to the dialog, and you so the the warning sign has disappeared because I have used a, a placement for my flag already. So finally, uh, the last thing I, I want to show here is um, in the metadata area. So I have the the list in the background for my values. Well, it's not as long as most companies will have this. I can go to any other article name and apply this to my drawing. Well, you see it has changed to cover and the German translation is uh, underneath. So, what happened in the in the background? Uh, in the background, the software created uh, not not this one. Let's go to tools parameters just to have a look here in the background. Part parameter name. You see, the software has created uh, a parameter article name for Chinese, for German, the regular English one and the French one with the respective values. And they're all designated for the uh, interaction with Windchill. Yeah, so that's uh, about the multi-language uh, parameter lists. Well, if I would start uh, the software in German language, I could <clears throat> use the German descriptions for selection as well. So let me go back to the presentation, and this brings me uh, to the final yeah, outlook of what we're planning to do in the near future. So the first thing, as you can imagine, is we want to integrate this flag um, functionality for standard annotations as well. As well, so this would finally mean that we can remove the complete flags tab and have the functions integrated in the respective tabs. Second thing will be, uh, as I said, in the background of the notes and the stack notes, we have uh, the Creo note functionality. And this note functionality is uh, a little bit more difficult uh, to to customize, so you can, uh, currently you can't have different text sizes uh, or um, italics or so in, in, in these notes, but we want to improve uh, the pattern file. That's kind of a description of how the text will be <clears throat> visible uh, to make sure that you can also use uh, other, Kinds of uh, formats for for the for the notes like color or text size also. And finally, um, we we want to have a, a a deep look into the 3D mode, how and <clears throat> how we can place information in a 3D model because it's a lot more difficult to do so either because Toolkit doesn't do a lot of things that we want to. And on the other hand, because you you don't have just to look how to place it, you have to look on how you can consume it from a 3D model later on. And this is what we want to do. And having a D 
deep look into how we can proceed in the 3D mode uh, with all these annotations and information to make it semantic, automatic, and reliable. So that's what there will be in the background. Okay, I have all these in the Outlook, yes. And yeah, well, this brings me already to the end of the webinar. I hope this was interesting and informative for you. So, and that's it in a nutshell. Now I would like to thank you for your attention and wish you all a pleasant day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.